let me say, a word in defense of reason in dialogue with faith. Because faith is that proof. Faith unites us to that substance. But reason, in order to realize its full potential, needs the horizons revealed by and truths contained in the faith. And not just any faith, but the Catholic faith. What I want to do is to compare uh, a study by uh, Mark Regnerus that gained some attention last year, uh, the New Family Structures Study, uh, with uh, a typical study um, uh, of gay parenting uh, to kind of flesh out some of the points that Steve just made and prepare the way for um, what Maggie's going to say. Uh, I call this Gay Parenting and the Conjugal Ideal, Implications for Research. So conjugality requires the joining of complementary sex organs by persons properly disposed to do so, right? Without such conjoining, and that's the root of the word conjugal, conjoining, according to most natural or religious accounts, men and women lack the particular character of relationship that's necessary for the mutual fulfillment of erotic love. And, this is the point I'm gonna be making, also optimal for the raising of children. Now, you probably all know this. This is bedrock Catholic teaching on this topic. And so, of course, homosexual partners who lack conjugality cannot raise children as competently as heterosexual partners who possess conjugality. As a recent Catholic teaching document on this topic expresses, quote, the absence of sexual complementarity in homosexual unions creates obstacles in the normal development of children such that, quote, allowing children to be adopted by persons living in such unions would actually mean doing violence to these children. Moreover, still quoting, the possibility of using recently discovered methods of artificial reproduction does nothing to alter this inadequately, inadequacy. Now, I could be accused of hate speech in lots of set settings just for reading that, but here, that, that should be kind of background knowledge to what I'm gonna talk about. Now, contrary to this understanding, which is echoed by, most, echoed by most other religious and traditional perspectives on the family, in the past 20 years, advocates for gay adoption have produced a spate of, quote, research studies, which claim to demonstrate on the basis of scientific evidence the opposite view. That is, that children in same-sex households fare no differently on developmental mm -hmm. outcomes than those in heterosexual households. And so to date, these gay parenting studies have lacked one or both of two essential features of method which are necessary for the findings to be dispositive. First, they lack a sufficiently large random sample or they lack information on child outcomes. An example is a recent study by the University of Cambridge's Center for Family Research for the British Association for Adoption and Fostering, which exemplifies both deficiencies in arriving at its conclusion that children in gay and lesbian families suffered no significant disadvantages compared to those in heterosexual families. Um, the recent new family structures by Mark Regnus of the University of T Texas, which is specifically designed to address both of the methodological problems that I mentioned, is the first study to demonstrate, although not without some limitations, that children raised by gays or lesbians are subject to a range of negative social, emotional, and relational outcomes. Now, I want to compare these a little more closely. The BAAF study compared 131 adoptive families, 40 gay male families, 40 lesbian families, and 41 heterosexual families. All of them had adopted children. And so it's doing a, a strict comparison. Statistical research samples estimate the presence of differences in the population they represent according to a strict calculation of probabilities. The larger the sample, the more precise the estimate. In a typical telephone survey of about 1,000 cases, differences between two categories, say those four are against a particular policy pro proposal or a political candidate, 
greater than about six percentage points probably represent true differences in the underlying population. This is commonly expressed as a margin of error of plus or minus three percentage points for each of the data points. Just a review for all you non-quantoids out there. With only 131 cases, the BAAF study has an ideal margin of error of 8.6 percentage points, meaning it can, at best, only distinguish differences greater than 17 percentage points. This limitation, by the way, is never reported in the BAAF study report. And be because it compares three groups rather than the usual two groups, its precision is reduced even further. I don't know if I say this later on, but that's that 131 cases is actually very large for this class of research. So the BAAF study, remember the goal is to find out if there are differences among the outcomes of children in these three groups. So they're comparing the heterosexual, uh, heterosexual adoptees uh, with those adopted by gay males or lesbian couples. And they report that there are no differences in the outcomes of these three groups of children. But they report findings of no difference even when there are substantial differences in the sample that they examine. That's because they lack the statistical power to find those differences. For example, they report, quote, no significant differences between family types were found for any of the subscales of a psychological assessment, even though the subscales actually differed by 10 to 18 percentage points. Uh, on feelings about contact with the birth family, open adoption. 60% of heterosexual parents reported positive feelings about this compared to only 40% of the lesbian mo mothers. The conclusion they report, quote, no difference in feelings about contact was found among family types. Um, by contrast, Regnerus collected a sample over 20 times as large, 2,988 cases, which has a margin of error of only 1.8 percentage points. So he could distinguish differences as small as 3.6 percentage points, although most of the differences he found were much, much larger than that. So by drawing a larger sample, he was able to find differences that a whole stream of kind of gay advocacy research claims they were not able to find. So the second weakness of the BAAF study is the, in the use of the outcome measures. Social scientists have long understood that child development can only be assessed by looking at outcomes. That is, how well children thrive as adults once they leave the family on their own. What matters most for well-being and fulfillment are not how children or parents feel about things at the moment, though well, that's important, but how well they function later as adults. Children denied primary education, for example, seldom are unhappy about it at the time. But they find themselves at a great disadvantage as adults compared to persons who had the opportunity to learn to read and write. Um, most problems don't show up until later, but the BAAF study can't follow outcomes into adulthood, and so it can't report those findings. There are other biases. You have a, a recruited sample in the BAAF study recruited through advertisements in gay publications and posters put in gay bookstores and bars. The posters said, come help us prove that children are raised. Okay, so you can obviously see the bias in that kind. This is called ascertainment bias, and it's rife. By contrast, the Regnerus study draw, drew in a, a, a true random sample. Now, the, I, I didn't forgot to bring it. But the report of the BAF study is in a glossy booklet, has pictures of little kids and happy family groups on the cover. Um, its point is not to advance scientific knowledge, but the goals of the British Association for Adoption and Families and for the, their gay partners, right? It's not peer-reviewed. It is a piece of public relations under the guise of scientific objectivity. And that's really the state of the art until Regner has put his study out. Um, now, the Regner study is a serious attempt to address an important question of social science that results in clear, defensible, empirical findings. The BAAF study presents no serious evidence at all 
to challenge Regnerus's findings. But this doesn't prevent the BAAF study from being celebrated, as it has been in England, as it has not prevented Regnerus's study from being excoriated, as it has been in this country, by cultural elites for whom the acceptance of homosexuality as normal, and thus the innocuousness of same-sex parenting, is an article of faith. Now, although the cultural elites don't know it yet, Regnerus's study is really the wave of the future. I think it signals the high water mark, that the high water mark for the approval of gay parenting is near or may already have been reached. Now, I can say this because we've been down this cultural cul-de-sac before with regard to other marriage innovations, and I'm thinking now of divorce. In the 1970s, you may recall, rising divorce rates were widely celebrated among academic elites as a new era of relational freedom. Studies at that time of young children in post-divorce households, of which today's gay parenting studies are eerily reminiscent, purported to show that they were faring no worse than comparable children in stable married households. It wasn't until scholars could examine crucial, actual, empirical outcomes of children of divorce well into their adult lives that the full trauma and harm of parental divorce for children became evident first through retrospective studies and finally I think almost definitively in Judith Wallerstein's 25-year retrospective study that was only published in the year 2000. So today family sc scholars widely recognize that divorce uh, it, it is not good for children. Um, we can have confidence, I think, that at some point as we gain more experience with children raised in same-sex households, and as the first of them mature into adulthood in large enough numbers to examine them as a group, the developmental obstacles they face, which are now hypotheses of religious faith and the natural law, will become fully, though probably slowly and grudgingly recognized by those who are amenable to empirical evidence, which in the end, uh, can't be denied. Thank you.